it's common this time of year to visit our loved ones at the cemetery. There we plant flowers, mind hedges, leave stones and, perhaps, tell stories of life above ground. But in an annual production at Forest Lawn, it's Buffalo's famous loved ones who do the visiting. It Was a Wonderful Life is a unique piece of theater, part history lesson, part holiday concert, part Buffalo Boosters meeting. At under 90 minutes and without an intermission, it's a breeze, a contemplative afternoon in the gravest of locations. And yet, it's not morose, thanks to its tongue-in-cheek candor and Christmas sheen. In its sixth year, with a few new characters and mostly new cast members, the show is growing more and more into a tradition. A recent Sunday afternoon performance packed the cemetery's chapel. The show debuted in 2012 under the tutelage of writer Joseph de Merle, a fixture in Buffalo's theater scene for years before moving away, and the late Michael Hake, a musical director with abundant prestige and personality. Their legacy, at least regarding this show, remains intact with fresh new interpretations and updated facts. Anyone who knows de Merle or remembers Hake will surely feel their presence in these hallowed halls. Cast member Sheila McCarthy directs this year's production, and is also credited with script adaptations. Her work in all three areas is sharp and nicely handled, but it's her performance as Martha Williams, a founder of the Women and Children's Hospital of Buffalo, that stands out. She has an exquisite grasp of this place loveliness, its decision to channel the cemetery's residents as friendly ghosts visiting from a sort of buried heaven. During their visit with us, they question modernity, the way we sometimes do, and revel in their memories of living. The play's title comes in handy many times. McCarthy helps Williams feel as familiar as a great aunt or grandmother, a real-life presence in our midst whose occasional reference to her own death is a sad reminder of her fate. This is a standout performance that bridges the past and present with longing elegance. McCarthy's segment is tarnished only by a curiously excessive number of references to the Oishe family and its foundation, which distracts with the suggestion of sponsorship. Elsewhere, through mostly fine and entertaining performances, it's easier to accept these characters as exhibits rather than spirits. McCarthy, though, sets a fantastic standard. Robert Ernie Insana and Janice Mitchell made unconvincing cases for their personalities, cobbling together their lines with varying degrees of success. Mitchell's bio notes that she is a seasoned jazz singer, with a serious CV. Of her own acting is not her strength in this appearance, however her, inexplicably polished, musical performance is worth the stumbling preamble. Shirley Chisholm, the pioneering African-American politician, meanwhile, is quite the jazz act, it turns out. Insana's occasional hiccups had more to do with readiness than anything else. He is a fine, if vanilla, host, as John Lay, Jr., the cemetery's very first resident. Similarly, Christopher Standard's turn as M&A's co-founder Robert Adam is effective but static.